Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Brewer Science with Dominic Miranda, who's going to talk today about the impact of materials on printed electronics. Dominic, when we think about printed electronics, we're not talking about 10 nanometers, 7 nanometers, right? These are typically some of the more established older nodes. Yeah, actually, when we think about print electronics, we don't think about nodes in the same sense that we do, for example, in the IC or chip world when we're uh, developing uh, devices on silicon. When we're talking about print electronics, uh, size is, is of less importance. Uh, we're talking about enabling sensors and things like that that are, are printed on a large scale. We're not talking about nanometers, we're talking about micron type of lines and things like that. And, and wide area kind of sensing capabilities, not, uh, not the typical chip design. And so what are some of the big issues that you have to think about when you're working with materials in, in printed electronics? So material selection is critical uh, when you're designing a sensor, for example, using print electronics. Um, selecting the right inks uh, to use to achieve the desired performance um, at the earliest stages by knowing what the application is, what type of desired performance you're trying to get, and, and making those uh, selections or those decisions early on in the process is really critical. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. What are we looking at here? So what I'm showing here is a really a simplified diagram. I could draw this with some more complexity and some maybe sub-bubbles in here. But what I want to highlight is um, how important materials are to the overall uh, design. And what I show here is kind of a, a three different um, bubbles, uh, all of equal importance. Uh, with materials at the top, uh, the performance or what you're trying to achieve in terms of the sensor design or device design. Uh, and then the device functionality over here. So each one of these are um, equal when it terms to when it comes to achieving the desired customer's, I guess, performance. And do the materials change depending upon the type of sensor that you have? So, for example, if you're if you're working with a vision sensor versus a a vibration sensor or a, a moisture sensor, it, are all the materials different? Oh, absolutely. So the the selection of materials, um, for example, the inks that might be selected. Uh, so if, you, if you're using a, an ink for, let's say, a moisture sensor or a temperature sensor, and we might select a, a CNT-based uh, ink or a carbon nanotube-based ink uh, to be the, serve as the active layer for that. Whereas uh, for a different type of te temperature sensor, uh, for example, like an RTD, we might just select a, a conductive metal uh, to be printed onto a, a, a flexible substrate. And it's not just conductive materials, right? It's also some of the insulators that get printed on here as well? That's correct. I mean, there's a wide range of decisions to make when we're, you're designing a device or a sensor system. Um, from the, the substrates that are used, again, these are print electronics. The strength of them is in their, uh, in a lot of ways, their flexibility uh, to be able to conform to um, surfaces that aren't flat in many ways. Uh, so the encapsulants that are used, if you want for example, in a moisture sensor, you want moisture to be able to reach the sensor surface, but you don't want uh, a, a surface that allows someone the hands or the oil in their hands or fingers to disrupt the sensing capability. So you want moisture to come in, but you don't want you know people's oil in their hands to uh, disrupt the sensing. So the choice of encapsulant in that case is really critical, and all of those things, um, all of those decisions from building from the ground up, from the inks that are used, the active layers to the encapsulants and substrates that are used are all of critical importance when you're talking about designing the sensor for the right application. What type of applications do you see this going into? What kinds of markets that it's never been in before? So printed electronics uh, can provide us with um, a lot of, of new applications. We see a rise in the uh, utilization of wearable devices. Print electronics specifically are really well suited for those types of applications. And th some of the reasons are uh, the flexibility of their design, I'm talking literal flexibility of the design, um, also the versatility and being able to do different things with form factor. Um, but in the, if we consider something like a wearable device and why a, a printed electronic or flexible uh, electronic package is, is uh, more suitable than a rigid one, uh, we're talking a lot about comfort level. Um, and you know, the types of sensing that we might be doing may not be vastly different uh, in many ways than a a rigid uh, type of, for example, thermistor or moisture sensor that you might apply to the body. But if you can integrate it into clothing, onto um, actual textiles, print it into a textile, um, then that offers something that these kind of conventional rigid electronics are not well suited to do. No one wants to wear you know, a heavy kind of uh, 
pack on them with a bunch of you know, solid electronics on them. And this is one of the fundamental shifts of where printed electronics is going to, right? Because we tend to think about wearable electronics as something you strap on your wrist or something that you tape onto your body. It's now being able to move into clothing. It can move into your shoes. It can move into almost anything. That's correct. There, so there are a lot of you know, wearable devices as of today. Um, like you mentioned, it's, we're talking about smart watches and, and, and things like that, or you know, wristbands and things like that. But when we can integrate uh, sensors and uh, printed electronics, I'm talking about more, print, more uh, complex print electronics into clothing and things like that, it becomes a lot easier for people to adopt. And that's one of the biggest challenges for print electronics right now is getting them adopted into higher volume uh, usage and uh, wearable applications for medical types of markets or for sports, things like that, are areas where uh, print electronics are really going to shine. We've been hearing about printed electronics for quite some time. The actual application of them has been a lot slower. What's held it up? I think there's, a, there's still a lot of optimism about printed electronics in general. Uh, and I think in the early days, uh, a lot of the uh, the concept or the advantages of print electronics was was really in the be, the ability to mass produce these on at such a scale that the cost of them is almost irrelevant. Um, so if you can print off millions of sensors, if you can do a roll to roll process and have a sensor design and literally print off meters of that over a few hours, you've got millions of sensors, uh, then you can dramatically drive down the cost. I think what we've found is that that hasn't been a really compelling reason to adopt the technology. It's going to be in these areas, I think, like, uh, like wearable devices um, in medical type of applications uh, where we're going to see some early uh, wins for print electronics and that's going to um, create a, an environment where engineers get more comfortable in utilizing them in their, in their devices, uh, in their designs. and further the whole marketplace as a whole. So cost is still a critical factor, but it's not the driving factor, it's function and application. Uh, it's, a, it's still a critical factor in a lot of ways. I, I guess I would say that it hasn't been a critical factor in terms of market adoption. It, that isn't the thing that's driving market adoption right now. Um, it's still a critical factor for customers who are looking for, especially sensing as it needs to become more ubiquitous, cost is still, still a, a, a major factor. Um, and th that's another thing about print electronics that I think is, uh, is compelling. Um, it doesn't require uh, a billion dollar fab uh, to make these things. We're talking about established and continually in improving uh, printing techniques using screen printing or roll-to-roll -roll printing or inkjet printing. Uh, these are tools that are available to a wide range of people based on their cost. And even doing design changes, process changes in terms of your sensor design, you can do those quickly in a matter of a few weeks. Um, and so all of those things in terms of the, those all impact cost and those will all be things that uh, allow print electronics to be um, cost conscious and very competitive versus the uh, technologies that have been established for decades in terms of sensing. So in print electronics versus the, the classical discrete electronics, it's, it's not so much the lithography and how you develop these wafers, it's more about the chemistry of the inks, right? That's absolutely correct. So. The, the functionality of the inks, the, the materials that you select uh, when, you, uh, when you're making your ink selections. As I mentioned before, you can use you know, conductive metals or inks that, you can, uh, that, yeah, that are metallic in nature, or you can use carbon-based uh, inks like carbon nanotubes or you know, graphene-type materials that are sprayed on. Um, yeah, there's a wide range of, of possibilities that you can uh, select when you're looking at different types of inks. So where's the real value? What's, what's the value proposition here? So I, what I've got drawn here that you may have seen represented elsewhere, I, it's, not, uh, it's not unique, um, but we're looking at the, the perceived value um, and in, in a lot of ways uh, the, you know, the dollar figures that are attached to the different aspects of a, a product or a device uh, change or even the utilization in a system um, in that kind of supply chain, if you will. So at this end, uh, we have materials. So if I was going to apply the dollar value, have a one dollar sign on this, uh, that gets uh, moved, that gets bumped up the, the value chain when we start talking about sensors. So once you move uh, from sensors, you start talking about more integrated electronics. Uh, you start, you know, seeing this relationship moving higher and higher up the value chain, going from integrated electronics 
um, into actual devices, integrated systems. And then at the end of here, uh, and this was uh, mentioned several times uh, this week in the conference I was at, but uh, the actual value or the high value uh, where people are going to make all of their money is actually in ownership of the data. And that value goes, uh, has the highest uh, perceived value. And while that's, that's true to a large extent, um, that has some impacts, and that's one of the things I want to point out today, is that at this end you have materials in terms of the actual dollars or the perceived value and the materials in this total supply chain. It might be true that this has the lowest um, you know, perceived value. Um, and that often leads to people overlooking this and the importance of it. But if I was going to draw a line in terms of importance, especially in making decisions on, on device performance and even how it affects data, I would actually kind of inverse this uh, chart through here. Making the material selection is critical, uh, of critical importance from the very beginning. In terms of how all these things, uh, how they all function uh, throughout this entire, I guess, uh, ecosystem. So it's important in terms of how the actual sensors function. It's important to know how they function in those integrated electronics and then the devices and then even in the data. How do you go about selecting the right material? What are the trade-offs there? Uh, that's another area uh, that's important to be engaged with the, the, the people who are going to be utilizing these devices and understanding how they're going to apply it in the environment. So making the material selection um, of a device that somebody wants to wear um, that's embedded in their clothing and for what purposes. Is it going to be used in a, uh, a medical environment, in a hospital? Or is it going to be used outdoors in, in the you know, environment where you're going to have to worry about rain, snow, different temperature changes, things like that? Those uh, material selections are all critical to know uh, in those specific applications how they will actually be utilized. Um, so those all play a factor in the material selection. One of the issues that I don't think a lot of people thought about when they were getting into connected electronics is the amount of data that the sensors will be sending. And so you've got with a uh, vision sensor, for example, you've got streaming data, which is an enormous amount of data. Some of that has to be pre-processed locally by whatever the device is. How does that play into printed electronics? So for print electronics, it's equally critical. Um, and it's absolutely correct that the having um, essentially ubiquitous sensing, being able to deploy tens of thousands or millions of sensors in a, in a wide array or network um, leads to more and more data. Uh, what's critical in terms of uh, the material selection in that is that we can design sensors with our material selection that um, that only detect what you want to to pick up, the things that you want to see, the gases that you want to detect, and eliminate a lot of the noise. That allows a lot more processing power. So if you're if you don't have a lot of noise in the data that's coming through. That allows things like your AI algorithms to do a much more efficient job of doing that. We're talking about less power. Again, it affects the entire ecosystem. And I don't think very many people think about that when they're thinking about sensor design uh, in terms of how materials play into how the, the algorithms and the computing power that might be required to operate those sensors. Dominic Miranda, thanks for a great explanation of a topic most people really don't understand. Thank you.